Okay, so we're going to go on to another uh, poem by Morgan called In the Snack Bar. And uh, okay. Okay. So uh, this poem by Morgan is again similar to uh, some of the others in that uh, the topic of the poem is something like unexpected. In other words, the topic of the poem is uh, a person who is going through a struggle of disability and uh, to some extent we can assume uh, poverty as well. So again, it's similar to Glasgow Sonnet and it's also similar to uh, Glasgow Fifth of March in that uh, it reflects um, it reflects people that you know you could say poems aren't usually made about. It reflects uh, subject matter which is usually not talked about in sort of um, you know like classically talked about in sort of poetic form. Usually, poetry is made and reserved. Especially if you talk about classic poetry. Usually classic poetry is about uh <clears throat> excuse me, like high high type of things yeah, in terms of like um princes, princes, princesses, love, romance, uh heroism. It's like think about like Disney films, like the classic Disney films, that's what like classic poetry usually is. You know, concerned with. Uh, obviously, this isn't this isn't true like fully because uh, there's a lot of poetry which is um, about other things, which is about more uh, normal sort of people and normal sort of concerns. But in any case, uh, with Morgan, like we talked about before, with Morgan, his poetry seems to revolve around things which are not usually talked about or are ignored. And people that are usually, to a large extent, ignored, especially in like, you could say, academic or uh, uh, classic art type endeavors. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> the poem. Excuse me. The poem begins. Uh, the poem begins obviously with the title giving us the setting. Which is that it's in a sort of like you could say like a cafe, diner, that kind of thing, yeah. Snack bar. Okay, so it begins a cup capsizes along the formica. Okay, a cup, obviously is a cup. A capsizes is when a ship uh begins to sink. Okay, so a ship when a ship is damaged and it's gonna sink, that's capsizing. Uh, along the formica, formica is the that shiny type of flooring that you put on the ground that's easy to wipe, the cheap type of flooring. And it's easy to clean if you spill something on it. So already in the beginning of the poem, we see the hint of uh, disaster and of something that has gone wrong. And it's attached to, again, sort of um, something simple or every day, and something which is, to an extent, in a large part, people dislike formica, yeah, they don't like it. They dislike uh, decorating their houses with it, and they think a lot of people would say it's like ugly. Yeah. So something ordinary, to some extent, something seen as ugly, and the idea is that some disaster is occurring connected to it so those things which i just said are going to be they essentially foreshadow in other words they are going to be they represent what the man in the poem is okay he's a everyday ordinary individual who people see to some extent as ugly they want to avoid him like they want to avoid this formica and he has many disasters going on in his life Okay, so the first line is like a setup for that for us to come. Okay, anyway, slithering with a dull clatter. So the cup falls on the floor 
it slides across the ground and it doesn't really make much impact yet again it's going to be like the man his life is a disaster but he's not very outspoken or he doesn't make sound he doesn't make noise in other words people don't hear him they ignore him yet you'll see in a second okay uh, a few heads turn in the crowded evening snack bar an old man is trying to get to his feet okay so he's the one who dropped the cup right, he's the one who dropped the cup okay a few heads turn in the crowded snack bar so only a few people look to see what happened most people ignore him okay on purpose on purpose we're gonna find out it's on purpose okay an old man is trying to get to his feet from the low round stove fixed to the floor okay so an old man so already we have the fact that he is uh, physically he's physically deteriorating and uh, because he's trying to get to his feet meaning he's finding it a struggle to get to his feet um even though the the stool is low to the ground yet it's like uh it's not as if he's up high somewhere and now he's like you know he might fall or something so he's being careful the stool is like in a normal you know low place uh, so he shows you he's extremely physically weak. Okay, slowly he levers himself up to lever is uh, it's just another way of saying um, you use you use levers to pick something heavy up. Okay, so it's demonstrating the amount of effort that he has to go through to pick himself up to pick himself up. Okay, his hands have no power. Again, going along with what I just said a minute ago, that he has deteriorated, he's falling apart, and um, uh, symbolically, 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 if you think about it, uh, connected to what I said a minute ago with the idea that uh, the cup falls on the ground and makes no noise, no impact, so the man himself makes no impact in terms of people are not people are not uh affected by him or he has no ability to uh impose himself on anyone or force them to pay attention to him um they ignore him basically his hands have no power okay so his hands have no power double meaning one meaning obviously is that he has no health he's not got good health so he doesn't have the power to help himself and to uh, do the things that he wants to do one and then the other meaning has no power meaning ability to ability to exact force or impose his will or uh, uh, have authority over other people power like a government has power or uh, a gun has power like that yeah so he has neither okay so essentially he is an old man who is extremely weak who is ignored and uh and it gets worse yeah it gets worse and he's struggling to stand up so he's struggling to do the most basic thing to stand up okay he is up as far as he can get so he gets to his feet and uh, even when he gets to his feet, he's not able to get uh, all the way standing up straight. Okay, why is that? The dismal hump looming over him fa forces his head down. So uh, he, he has a, a hunchback. Basically, uh, his skeleton is, you could say, like misshapen. His skeleton is not fully straight, but it forces his head uh, to be sort of bowed forward. And uh, what this does, uh, what this does is, what this does, okay, is in a sense, uh, this is obviously like made extreme yet. Yeah. But uh, let me show you like actual. These are all extreme, extreme, extreme. What the heck? 
Okay, so even though this is a cartoon, right, this kind of illustrates it. So you can see his back is like rounded. Okay, he can't stand up straight. So what this does, okay, is... Um, what this does is it pl places his head and his... Um, All right, so this is kind of extreme, yeah. I don't know if this is real. I don't think it's real. It's not real. Okay, anyway, what it does, okay, is it places his head in uh in a way where he is sort of forced to lean forward and um bow his head, yeah, to have his head be uh low, basically, to have his head be low. He's like this all the time. So what that means, okay, is uh that uh like this yeah like this he can't stand up straight so what that means okay is that um on top of his on top of his uh physical weakness okay on top of his physical weakness and his inability to um do the things that he wants to do what it means is in terms of like symbolically or if you look at it in terms of what it represents his head being down and forward like that is his his posture his posture represents the way that he feels number one he feels like he's lower than everyone and number two his posture represents his weakness in terms of how people see him and his inability to uh, exact any form of power or force on anyone so it's like uh, <clears throat> excuse me it's like the man is weak in every way including the way that he stands and the way that he stands physically represents the way that he feels about himself and represents the way that people see him, that they are, that he is below them, not worth looking at, not worth paying attention to, and represents, and it represents also, um, metaphorically, I guess, the idea of weakness itself, yeah, that he is essentially a symbol of weakness in every kind of way, okay, he's old, He's um, his posture is bel he belittles himself through his posture. People ignore him and they look down on him, and he looks down on himself. Okay, he thinks that people are above him, better than him. Uh okay. So he stands in his stained beltless gabardine again. Now we have another layer. <clears throat> Excuse me, which is now the idea of poverty because his clothes are stained. So obviously if he had money, he would have different clothes. He wouldn't be wearing the same clothes. Um, his clothes are stained. And so we have the idea of uh, of pover poverty alongside uh, the other things which I mentioned a minute ago, the other weaknesses. Also, this jacket that he's wearing, he has no belt to wrap it, to wrap. Uh, the jacket up to make it fit properly, fit tightly, and so it looks it looks bad too. Okay, so you can see layer upon layer upon layer of weakness or, uh, yeah, weakness, uh, lack of power, uh, inferiority, um, in all these different ways. Yeah, and now we're being told. Like a simile is given, like a monstrous animal caught in a tent. So, um, you could assume, okay, you can imagine that uh, the description here is describing the way that the people around him uh, view him, the way the people around him see him. This would be similar to in McCaig's Assisi, how the people uh, view the beggar outside the church how they look down on him and they see him as some kind of uh, thing which is not human um, so the people here they 
don't see this old man as an old man, but they see him as some kind of like creature or some kind of non-human thing, like an animal. Um, and an animal which is caught in a tent. So a tent is something that human beings use and it's a form of shelter protection. Whereas they see him as an animal, as something which shouldn't be in this place. Yeah. And if he's caught in the tent, it means that he has no protection. He has no, sh it's not shelter or protection for him, but it's like a trap. It's like, uh, it's like a place that he is stuck in and he doesn't want to be in and he can't get out. This itself would be uh, a reflection of his life. Okay, in that, just like the jacket which surrounds him and he's too weak to some extent to take off, you know, by himself. Um, all the weaknesses, disabilities and difficulties that he, have, that he has, his life itself is like this jacket, yeah, which surrounds him from all angles and which he can't go of, he feels stuck, trapped and and... It's not comfort. It's, he has no sort of comfort yet. There's no comfort in in anything for him. So again, it's sort of like the speaker, or the poet. He, 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 it's like the poet kind of thought about what can I, how can I, um, you know, what would be the most tragic individual that I could create? And then he came up with this guy. If it's not a true story, I don't think it's. I don't know if it's a true story. I don't. I haven't checked. I don't. So far as I know, it's not. I don't know if that's for sure, but in any case, you could see this is like the most tragic individual uh, that you could imagine. Yet. And I guess even worse, yes. We're not even done yet. Okay. In some story. In some story. So bad that it's not even like real life yet. Not even realistic, but it's like worse than that. Okay, it gets worse. Okay, he sways slightly. The face not seen, the face, not his face, the face. Again, the idea that people now are viewing him as not human, but something else. Not seen, bent down, we talked about that, in shadow, under his cap. So, uh, when he bends forward, in terms of the, you know, the way he stands, like I showed before, um, he has a hat on his head. And so you can't even see his face yet. His face is covered in darkness from the shadow of his hat. And what this what this represents, what this uh, relates to, connects to, is the man feels embarrassed and he feels extremely insecure about all these different things which I laid out, all the different issues and problems he has. And so in a sense, he's trying to hide his face from the world okay he's trying to hide himself away from the world um which is very common it's very common uh it's a very common thing um it's like when you feel anxious and then you don't want to look people in the eye we all have experienced this to some extent if you've gone through any kind of trauma you, you know what i'm saying um when you feel anxious you don't want to look people or maybe you want to stay home more you don't want to go out as much you don't like to be in crowds that kind of thing um, it feels too much sometimes. He, this man is going through that, but at, at an extreme level, at an extreme level. Just think about your own experience with that, with that, and then multiply it by a lot, and then you'll understand what the man is experiencing. Um, <clears throat> you could say, you know, in a sense that, um. With, uh, with Morgan's uh, poetry, with Morgan's stuff, it's like it's like uh, hyper realistic. Okay, it's realistic beyond you know maybe even what's real in terms of uh, he doesn't present the people in his poetry um, like uh, like you know fairy tale characters or something. In other words, normally in this kind of poem, normally in this kind of subject matter, when you'd have a person who's going through different things, it wouldn't be uh, uh, 
as just sort of you know brutal as this yeah it would be like there's some kind of light side to it some kind of happy ending or something that's gonna happen for him whereas in Morgan's poems there is no sort of happy stuff at the end yet there's no like bright side there's no it doesn't give up it doesn't let up yet the trauma and the tragedy just exist and what he's doing okay by what he was doing by you know writing his poetry that way is essentially giving you making you for focus on the tragedy that people really do go through and the real tragedy that people do live and experience which normally gets ignored to a large extent so he's not letting the reader uh escape you know by just like looking at something bad or sad for a minute and then changing the subject to something happy uh to spare their feelings but instead he's making them focus on something sad difficult and making them focus on it fully throughout the pro the poem the poem uh without giving them any kind of break it's like here is reality uh folk here is what reality looks like for these people that we usually ignore um and that, that's what i'm going to show you that's what i'm going to show you basically okay anyway anyway it gets worse for the man so even on his feet he is staring at the floor again his insecurity his anxiety hyper self-consciousness embarrassment or would be if he could see so i guess even worse yet so the the man not only is he disabled in those other ways hunchback and uh weak physically old and deteriorating um head forced to look at the ground or be lower than the people around him no only and uh, poor as well not only does he have all these things but on top of that he is also blind he's blind he can't see um no it's interesting because uh he can't see physically okay but at the same time he still has some sort of picture of himself in terms of what he looks like or what he thinks he looks like because he is embarrassed of himself and he has some idea that the people around him are better than him so uh maybe before maybe he used to be able to see before and now he can't see or maybe it's just that he knows from the treatment that he's received that people don't like him and people want to ignore him and therefore his self image which is the picture you see of yourself in your head in other words what you actually this is something good something important to think about okay what is self image so uh, without getting too complicated so basically there is the you that other people see okay which is what you actually look like to some extent and then there is the you that you see uh what you think about how you see yourself in your own head in your heart in your mind now the thing about the you that you see is that it's an incomplete picture okay the simplest way for me to explain this to you is uh if you look you're looking at me right now okay in this uh video so you can only see uh the front of me yeah? you can only see my face and the things i'm wearing and my hand and, and so on okay you can't see what's behind me you can't see i mean as in you can't see the back of me you can't see uh below this where the camera cuts off or above where it cuts off so your what you can see is limited uh it's limited okay you can only see certain things yet you can only see certain things so the same way that you can only see certain things physically because you can only focus on certain things your eye your eye can't see 360 and everything in the same way the picture you have of yourself is only a certain slice of yourself it's a certain 
way of looking at yourself, which doesn't capture the whole picture. Now, this is important, and you this is true. You know this is true because how you there, there is a you that you used to believe, okay, that you used to see maybe when you were younger. You used to see yourself in one way when you were younger, which you don't see yourself that way now. For better or for worse, yeah, it's changed. In a couple more years, it will change again. Yeah. You won't see yourself the same way that you see yourself now. How is that? How is that? It's because your perspective changes. Yeah, You look at yourself in a different way, from a different angle. You see different things in yourself. In any case, what this means, okay, is that the pic you have a picture of yourself inside of you, which you, you can change by looking at yourself differently. Okay, oh, I say all that to say that this man's self-image, that's what self-image is, this man's self-image, and it affects many things, yeah, it greatly affects how you feel about yourself, your anxiety, your confidence, your desire to do things, your goals, your motivation, all of that. Anyway, but the point is, even though he's blind physically, he has his, his self-image is so poor, his self-image is so negative, that all of these things, the behaviors, the way he behaves, the way he acts, all of those things are based purely on his self-image, not even based on how he actually looks, because he can't see how he looks, so he's blind. Not based on how people are actually looking at him, or the way that they're reacting to him, because he can't see any of that yet. It's all in his head yet. It's all in his head. It's all based on his thoughts. Well, a very powerful lesson yet for all of us to think about. A very powerful lesson. What is our self-image? How are we seeing ourselves? Uh, because we can change it that's another thing is that your self-image is malleable you can change it like how you can change where you stand you know when you look at yourself you can change the angle you can change your self-image too in any case his self-image is messed up yeah it's messed up completely and so he looks at himself in a terrible way okay anyway i notice now his stick so this is a speaker i notice his stick once painted white but scuffed again he's poor can't afford a new stick to walk with Hanging from his right arm, long, blind, hunchback, born, half paralyzed, he stands. Okay, again, his life is tragic. Blind, hunchback, so spine's all messed up. Half paralyzed, okay, da damaged physically, uh, unable to move the way he wants to move. <clears throat> okay, he stands fumbling with the stick. No confidence, uh, no confidence. Stands fumbling with the stick. He has to prepare himself before he talks. Because uh, he's unsure of himself. He's completely nervous and embarrassed about himself. I want... He hesitates. Look how he talks here. Yeah, broken up. I want to go to the toilet. He has to ask out loud. So he's asking no one specifically. No one in particular. Which tells you, tells you. He came to the place by himself. Okay, no one is with him. So again, he's isolated, he's weak, he's disabled, and so on. This man has the most tragic existence you could think of. Um, and you can imagine this has been his life for a long time, which is probably why he's got this messed up self-image. In any case, no one is with him, and he has to ask out loud. Okay, just in the air, he's just asking everybody around him, I want to go to the toilet. And... You can also see, you know, the way he talks, uh, that even maybe that the man isn't uh, educated, that he didn't get a chance to become educated, uh, because he doesn't say, can someone please help me go to the bathroom or something like that. He says, I want to go to the toilet. He's almost like a child yet, yeah, the way he's talking. It's almost like a child how he talks. So, again, every kind of tragedy or every kind of uh, disadvantage you can think of, the man has it. The man has it. Okay. Anyway, it's down two flights of stairs what we go. So the speaker has decided to help him. Okay, good guy. I take his arm. Give me your arm. It's better. So again, the man, uh, the old man's been here before. Okay. Uh, uh, so you can see this is his life here. Yeah, this is his everyday life. Inch by inch, he moves very slowly. We drift towards the stairs. A few yards of the floor, like a landscape to be negotiated. Remember, he's blind, so he can't just, like, walk normally. Good time to be grateful for our health. He can't just walk normally. He has to be very careful. He's going to trip, fall over. He's also paralyzed, remember? So if he falls, it's going to be very bad. And he's old, so it's going to be bad, bad, bad. 
and it's old as in not like old like 50 but elderly like 70 or something like that yeah that's old that kind of old if he falls he might break something yeah. slow setting out time has almost stopped he moves so slow that it feels like time itself has stopped I concentrate my life to his so the speaker fully now is dedicated to helping him which is great crunch of split sugar he's now describing the things that he sees as uh, they're walking together towards the bathroom slow dangerous inches to the rails to the stairs so the speaker has to pay attention to every small little thing so the old man doesn't trip um it changes the perspective on uh, how you act when your health is good versus how you're forced to act when your health is not so good. Again, great reminder to be grateful for good health here. Yeah. Okay, I put his right hand on the rail and take his stick. He clings to me, the stick in his left, probing the treads. He has to walk very slowly down the stairs. I guide his arm and tell him the steps and slowly we go down and slowly we go down. Repetition again to emphasize that they're moving extremely slowly. He has to be very careful where he places his feet. Okay, white towels and mirrors at last to get to the bathroom. He shambles uncouth, meaning messily, quickly, roughly. Uh, into the clinical gleam, just the bathroom is very white. I set him in position, stand behind him. So you can see even his dignity in terms of uh, as a man, his dignity, or even as you could say as a as an adult, his dignity of using the bathroom, like that's a very private, you know, embarrassing type of thing. Even that's taken from him. He has no choice but for someone else to help him because if he tries to do it by himself he might fall over or he might make him you know he might uh, mess up his clothes or something yet you know not to get too gross yet but he might like it might go wrong yeah so um so you can see again yeah just emphasizing again the tragic nature of his existence yeah it's a very tragic existence that the man has Okay, so the speaker is waiting behind him. It's kind of awkward, but... <laughs> it's kind of awkward, but I guess he's done a good thing. He's brooding. Brooding means... Brooding is like a... It's like a combination of... Brooding is like a combination combination of... Anger... The desire to hurt someone or something... And sort of like depression yeah it's like a combination of those to be brooding like a usually brooding refers to like a villain that's deeply hurt that's planning to kill the person that hurt them that's like brooding and you're planning on something like that uh, reflection darkens the mirror so in this case here you can see okay the the result of the tragedy um of his life is that uh he he has now to some extent become dark inside in that he if he could we get this from the brooding idea and the darkness reflecting the mirror if he could perhaps he would take revenge okay on the people that ignore him and look down on him and maybe even take revenge on the world itself yeah for being unfair something like that in his head yeah. so you can see to some extent that the the man the old man is you know and you could say maybe he's justified in doing this yet but you can see to some extent that the old man is making a bad decision yet in, in terms of how he's handling his tragedy he's, he's he's and you could say to some extent maybe this is why his tragedy is so bad yeah so you can imagine that he has a tragic life yeah far more tragic than many of us have thankfully uh but but his tragedy is increased uh by his by his choices by his choices so something extremely important i want all my students to remember this remember this okay uh 
the, the Stoics figured out something, you know, a long time ago, which is that they figured out that uh, in life things happen to you and many of those things you can't control yet, like becoming disabled or uh, being born disabled even or getting bad health or something, becoming poor when it's not your fault. Many things you can't control yet and tragedy will happen to you at some point. Things Bad things will happen to, at some point. You can't control them, but what you can control is your choices, yeah, how you react to them, what you do based uh, on the in the different situations that you're in. So, and another thing, so therefore, the point is always to just focus on what is the best choice you can make based on the situation that you're in. Because um, uh, many times you'll be in a situation, okay, where things are bad and there's things you can do that will make them worse, things that, that you can do which will make them better. So the choice is yours. Yeah, the choice is yours. Um, you can imagine, for example, if the old man, instead of brooding and you know plotting his revenge, you know, in his head, in his mind, uh, feeling sorry for himself and all that, which you could say he's extremely justified to feel sorry for himself. Yeah, if anyone's going to be feeling sorry for themselves, he deserves to. But say instead of that, instead of that, he decided to not feel bad for himself at all and to just focus on what he could do, yeah, what he could control. Then you could imagine that... Uh, things could at least in some ways be better for him uh, at least in some ways yeah um because again like i said no matter how bad things are you can always make them worse yeah through your choices and your attitude you can always make them worse uh, something to keep in mind yeah something to keep in mind because here's the thing here's the thing you have you have a life yeah you're going to live and so the only question really that matters is how would you like to live yeah what would your what what experience would you like okay would you like a bad one or would you like a good one yeah it's up to you yeah pretty much you're in a bad situation what would you like to do yeah would you like to make it worse or would you like to make it better what do you want to do it's in your hands yeah so even if you're justified completely in feeling angry sad upset depressed and so on. The question is, what kind of life, what kind of experience would you like? You want to make things worse on yourself? Or you want to make things better? That's the only question, yeah. So, it's the same thing, yeah. It's the same thing. Uh, okay, anyway. Boom, boom. Okay, even the way the man uses the bathroom is sort of weak and uh, draws sympathy from the speaker. Okay, painful ages to close his trousers and coat. I do up the last buttons for him. He asked doubtfully, can I wash my hands? Again, just sort of tragedy. I fill the basin, clasp his soft fingers around the soap. He washes feebly, patiently. There is no towel. I press the pedal of the dryer. Draw his hands gently into the roar of the hot air, but he cannot rub them together. Drags out a handkerchief to finish again. No, uh, No power yet, no power. He's glad to leave the contraption and face the stairs. He climbs. Steadily enough, he climbs. We climb. So they go upstairs again. He climbs with nine pauses. But with that one persisting patience of uh, the undefeated, which is the nature of Mammon all said. So again, the speaker is sort of... The speaker is sort of uh, optimistic, yeah, which is good. And he recognizes that despite all of his difficulties and tragedies, the man has strength. The man has strength, which is... Obvious because he's still living it. He's not. He hasn't given up, which is good, which is good. Okay, and slowly we go up, and slowly we go up again. Repetition, emphasizing how slowly the old man moves. <clears throat> Excuse me. The faltering, unfaltering steps take him, take him. <clears throat> excuse me, take him. Uh, at last the door. Across that endless yet not endless waste of a floor. So, uh, there's a couple things going on here. Uh, there's 
there's a sort of uh, wordplay going on where words which are opposites, you could call this an oxymoron or contrast or contradiction. Anyway, the words which are opposites are put together, endless, not endless, faltering, unfaltering. And you can say this represents uh, the way that the man moves. It's like stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, go, stop, go, stop, go, stop. And also you could say that it represents the confusion he feels when he's trying to move and go somewhere. That's a lot to, to, to do. Uh, a good tip for you when you're analyzing a text, when there's things which seem like they don't make any sense, oftentimes it represents how the character is feeling or in itself, it's a me it, there's meaning in the fact that it doesn't make sense. Okay, so the fact that this seems to contradict itself and not make sense, it's confused, represents to some extent how the man feels, the old man, how he feels when he's trying to move through the place. It's very confusing and he's lost a lot of the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, okay. Uh, I watch him helped on a bus. It shuddered off in the rain. Again, doesn't have much money yet. He has to take a bus. It shudders off in the rain. The conductor bends to here where he wants to go. Uh, wherever he could go, it would be dark. Okay, now again, this might seem like... Um, it might seem like I'm being mean or like I'm being harsh on the man. Um, but you notice that he doesn't say thank you to the speaker who helped him. There's not a mention of a thank you here. This would be an example of what I'm talking about in terms of choices, choices. It might seem simple, and again, it might seem like I'm being harsh. What does he have to be thankful about? Yeah, But you can imagine two scenarios, one where the old man has some level of gratitude in his life, despite all of his tragedy. Okay. And his life is extremely tragic, obviously. But he has some kind of gratitude in his life, he feels some level of gratefulness for whatever it is that he could think of that he has, despite all of his tragedy, versus no gratitude and uh, not being, not feeling any type of thankfulness, gratefulness, being just fully absorbed in uh, sadness, self-pity, hatred, anger, rage, frustration, Tell me, okay, even though he deserves, he's justified completely in terms of his tragedy, his life's horrible, but tell me, okay, which one do you think would give him a better life experience? The one where he's, some to some extent, grateful, or the one where he's purely angry, sad, and all of that, with no gratitude, no gratefulness at all? Which one? The gratefulness one, obviously, the gratitude one. It's the same thing for you, okay, which is that you need to think about. What can I do? What choices can I make? What are my options that I could even make my life slightly better? Okay, slightly better. Even if I'm justified in being angry about things. Because ultimately, ultimately, the only puni the only people we punish through our actions first is ourselves, yeah. Um there's a good Buddhist saying which says that a man that a man is not punished. Uh, that a man is not punished uh, because of his anger, but he is punished by his anger. Okay? That a man is not punished because of his anger. In other words, you won't get punished. Uh, you won't suffer, you know, uh, because your anger might come back on you and you get consequences for it, although that probably would happen too. But you will suffer from your anger. Your anger will punish you. It will hurt you. Yeah, being angry will hurt you. Okay, so it's the same thing for sadness and all that. Yeah, it's just anyway, anyway. Okay, wherever he would go, it would be dark, obviously, because he's blind, and then also darkness attached to sadness, depression, tragedy. Everywhere he goes, again, he carries with him all of his tragedy. All of his tragedy goes along with him wherever he goes. Okay, and yet he must trust men. So he needs to rely on other people. Without embarrassment or shame, he must announce his most pitiful needs. Again, terrible situation. You feel sorry for the person, obviously. Without embarrassment or shame, he must announce his most pitiful needs in a public place. In a public place. Now, again, 
again, this is not technically true yet. If you think about that, it's not technically true. You have to ask yourself, why does the old man have no friends? Uh, why does he have no friends? Oftentimes, when a person is a victim, like him, he's a victim, he has a tragic life. Oftentimes, that uh, victimization can lead the person to adopt certain attitudes, ways of being, energy, the ways of ways of talking and acting, which pushes people away from them. Okay, so you have to ask it. It's like uh, it's like if you ever actually talk to a homeless person, if you ever actually talk to one, and really talk to them and ask them about their life, or someone who's like a, a drug addict, something like that. If you ever actually talk to them, yet, you've been around them. Not just mean like a hi, how are you doing? But actually stand there and talk to them for like, you know, an hour or two after a couple of days. What you'll find, okay, is these people, I'm not saying all of them yet, but I'm saying a lot of people who are in bad situations that you pity them, you feel sorry for them. A lot of the time, at least part of the reason why they are there is because of their own actions, yeah, because of their own attitudes, ways, ways of thinking and ways of behaving that, they have to some extent hurt other people and that's why other people are not helping them they're not supporting them does that make sense it's not it's like there's tragedy someone has hurt them in some way or the world has hurt them in some way life has hurt them in some way but then there's also an element which is that they themselves have hurt other people and so other people now want to stay away from them does that make sense it's like their family, like they stole from their family or, uh, you know, they did this, they lied to someone, they can't stop lying or they're doing this and that. Um, and the point is, okay, is to not look at other people, but the point is to look at ourselves and to think about what am I doing myself? What actions am I taking? And I'm using the tragedy or whatever, the hard times, the pain as like a, justification for it like a crutch i can hurt people because i'm going through this yeah like that because the point is so long as you have that crutch the excuse the justification that for your for your for your negativity and your bad energy and your actions and so on then you only sort of push yourself further into that negativity yeah. as soon as you start to turn it around and let go of the excuses because ultimately they don't change anything yeah no matter what the excuses are they don't change anything they don't really help so they're pointless yeah and when you when you flip it around then you'll notice that you start to get better and people start to get drawn to you to help you and so on okay anyway anyway no one sees his face we talked about it before does he know how frightening he is in his strangeness under his mountainous coat his hands like wet leaves stuck to the halfway stick yes he knows okay because that's why he's embarrassed Yes, he knows. He knows. Okay, his life depends on many who would evade him. Again, like I said, people try to avoid him. They're trying to stay away from him. Um, but he needs them to function, to be able to do things. He needs them. He needs help. Okay, but he cannot reckon up the chances, having one thing to do. To haul his blind hump through the rains of August. Uh, so he has to struggle. He has to, Everything for him is a struggle. He cannot reckon up the chances. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what this means. Uh, I think it means something like he has no idea how likely it is that he'll survive or how long he can go for, reckon up the chances, count up the probability of whether he'll make it through this uh, August, yeah, whether, whether he'll make it through the rain, the rain. Okay, and then the poem ends with this, Dear Christ, to be born for this. Again, an exclamation of, with the exclamation mark from enough, an exclamation of the amount of pain, suffering, tragedy, and all that which he's experiencing to the point where he's questioning why was he born in the first place, okay, which is very common. Again, again, perfectly justified in asking this question, perfectly justified in feeling bad for himself, but again, the key question, okay, that you need to ask yourself when you've gone through trauma, suffering, abuse, crime has been done to you, 
you've been hurt by people and it wasn't your fault and you did it on purpose. You've been hurt by the world. Something's gone wrong in your family. Tragedy has hit you in some way. The key, okay, that you have to ask yourself is what is in your power? Okay, what do you have control over? Because ultimately, ultimately, what is it that we have what is it we we know? What is it that we know? We know that we exist. We have a life. And we know that that we have choices to make. Okay, about how we live this life. Certain of these choices will make this life at least better for us in different ways and better for other people that are around us in certain ways. And other choices will make this life worse for us and worse for the people around us. So always the game of life, always the always the uh, situation that we're in is one of what choices can I make right now okay, that would make my life better in some way and what choices can I make right now that would make it worse, okay? And essentially going for the ones that would make it better, even if just slightly, and avoiding the ones which would make it worse. And then realizing that over time, you keep doing that, you keep doing that, that life can improve in a in a great way, in a great way. It's just like if someone is, uh, someone is overweight to the point that they are, uh, the doctor says that you don't have much uh, longer to live if you don't do something about your weight, your health. And then the person slowly, one step at a time, one day at a time, they begin to lose weight. They begin to maybe walk very slowly, small distances, until the point that they become healthy. Yeah? They become healthy, they lose a bunch, a bunch of weight. They become healthy and even they become like muscular, they become fit, they look good, and it seems like from that one action, they gain confidence, they change their job, they start to make more money, they get attention from other people that they're interested in, now they might have a relationship going on, their family starts, to, they, they get more disciplined, like that, yeah, it starts to spread, starts to spread, yeah, like that, like a, like a tree, yeah, full of good fruit. So, that can happen yet. Yeah. The point is, it's just about what little thing can I do which would improve things? Does it make sense? Because ultimately the point is, the point is, either way you have to choose, yeah. That's the point. Either way you have to choose. Cry, don't cry. Make an excuse, don't make an excuse. Either way, you have to choose, yeah. Your life is in your hands. My life is in my hands. We have to choose, yeah. So we might as well choose the better choices, yeah. And therefore we can at least enjoy our lives and have a a good experience despite the 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 bad stuff yeah despite the bad stuff we can at least make our life mostly good yeah mostly good yeah, for ourselves and people around us and therefore at the end we can feel proud yeah of what we did and how we lived yeah we can feel good about it i would say that would be the takeaway from this poem which is all about tragedy that's how you deal with it pretty much uh, my advice to you if you want to know more about this or you want to become better with this my advice to you would be uh, to read the Stoics I recommend Epictetus and obviously Emperor Marcus it's like a classic um, I'd recommend those two um, oh. excuse me uh, yeah that was my kind of first step in terms of uh, becoming more emotionally uh, stable and so on. But anyway, uh, that's that's all for this. If you have any questions, just put them below. Um, I think there's only one more. Morgan, home to do. I'll do that in a bit. Uh, okay, take care and uh, I'll see you soon.